One of my favorite things to do in my digital sketchbook are these color studies, and today I want to share my process. This is not a step-by-step -step tutorial, more just sharing my routine and what I do. Today I am working on fish because I want to do a piece with a fish pond, and I almost didn't even film this because I was really nervous since I don't have a lot of practice drawing fish, but that also is the point of doing these studies, so... Here I am. You will definitely see me struggle through some spots, especially there is one fish. You will see. Okay, here we go. I am looking through Unsplash for reference photos. Love Unsplash. I am specifically looking for ones with color that I like or just where the fish are in kind of different positions. I want to try to practice drawing a range of shapes, I guess, and perspectives. Um, yeah, so anything that I think I might want, I will save, but I usually end up saving more than I really need. And back at my canvas, I will add the first photo that I want to draw and then start roughly sketching that out. And then once it's sketched on a separate layer, I will use the Streamlined Studio Pen to block out the full shape. And sorry, the lighting is kind of worse for a bit here. Uh, you can see Shane in the corner there. I didn't realize how much that would actually affect the recording, but he does leave in a few minutes. He also spends some time trying to eat the Apple Pencil and doing his usual his usual routine when I'm working as well, so you guys see that. Anyway, I am adding some shadows on a clipping mask above the fish layer with the wet acrylic brush. And sometimes I'm selecting my own color, but a lot of time I am selecting the color directly from the rest, from the reference photo, which is why I like to have it on the actual canvas as opposed to splitting my screen. So since it's in the actual canvas, I can press and hold on anywhere of the picture and then it will select that color for me. So I just finished putting in some highlights on a second clipping mask, and now I am working on a third clipping mask to do some of these details here. And here is where Shane decides he wants to eat the Apple Pencil, so we dealt with that for a bit, and I continue to add the details. And then I went ahead and started brightening up the highlights even more. And now I'm getting ready to erase sections of the actual main fish layer that we drew so anytime i'm about to do something like that i usually duplicate the layer just in case i don't like something and i will have my like base shape still um, but i'm using the soft brush and just erasing some sections of the fins to give that translucent look and then i'm using the eraser on i think the studio pen or some other normal brush to give some more sort of details to the edges of the other fin. I'm doing the details of the eye, adding a highlight. Even when the picture doesn't have one, I usually feel the need to add a little white highlight to the center of the eye. And then I went back to the drying brush and gave him a few more details. I added in a little mouth, which I don't know, I really struggle with the mouth of, I feel like every single animal, I a lot of times will just not give my animals any mouth because that's how I solve that problem if I have the option to do that. Um, yeah, then I group all of the fish layers together. I turn off the reference and kind of look at it one more time and usually we'll end up going in and adding some final highlights or color or shadows or I don't know, something. And so I'm just doing those final touches and then I am ready to move on to the next fish. So I'm keeping all of the goldfish layers in their own group and making a new group for the next fish. I cropped the reference photo just by sliding it off the edges of the canvas. So after I almost didn't do the study in the first place because I was afraid to draw fish, I almost then skipped this reference photo because it seemed really hard, that tail scared me, and it definitely, this is the one that in the end I feel like is my least favorite because I think it came out weird and I don't think it looks 
I don't like the way that it <laughs> looks compared to, I don't know, there's something about it that I don't like, but I'm trying to not be negative or too overly critical of my own work. And I did definitely learn a lot from doing it, which is the point. So I'm okay with it, but I'm sketching out the shapes and trying to really focus on each section of that tail. All right, I'm going back with my studio pen, outlining the whole fish and filling it in. Uh, this time I did do it in two sections. I did the main fish body here first, and then I created a second layer underneath it for the tail. I don't think this actually helped me in the long run. I think I overcomplicated it and I'm pretty sure I combined them down like not too long into the process because it was just not working the way that I thought it would. But I decided to, when in doubt, I usually will keep things separate and then go from there. So I did another thing differently with this fish. I think I was really nervous and just overcomplicated it way too much, but I decided to alpha lock the two main layers and then block in some additional color on each one. My thinking was that then I could add a multiply layer on top and do a bunch of shading that way. I think it just didn't blend as well and yeah, that's why I think it would have looked better had I not done that. So that's one of the things I learned in this process, <laughs> but I'm doing that for the main part of the fish body as well, just blocking in the general shapes and colors for each section. I realized that the body of the fish was way too dark of a purple, so I went back in and lightened that up. I finally added the red for the top of the tail, and then I started shading. So I'm drawing on clipping masks above the fish, and just adding the shadows, highlights, and all of the details in following the reference photo. And just like usual, I have multiply set for the shadow layers and overlay for the highlights. But there definitely are also, especially with this fish, times that I'll use a normal blend mode and just build up the colors on my own. A lot of times too, especially if I'm color sampling directly from the photo, I'll want to turn off any of the blend modes so that I actually get the exact colors that I'm selecting. At this point, I started adding a bunch of little scales in with the flat brush, and I really like how that turned out. That's probably my favorite part of this fish and definitely something I plan on trying to incorporate when I end up drawing fish in the future. Okay, so I'm gonna let this play for a minute while I continue to add the details and all of the shading and whatever I can to try to get it closer to the reference photo. But I will say there was a lot of undo, a lot of trial and error, a lot of back and forth, and just even so much that I've cut out of the video because it was really tedious and kind of painful to watch me struggle through it. But I'm just going to let it play until we get to the final details. All right, so I've turned off the reference and I'm going in with the dry ink brush to add some final details. You can see that I skipped the mouth again and I actually like it more once the reference is off because then I don't notice all of the imperfections as much. It kind of, I don't know, it looks better to me. But anyway, I really do not try, I really try not to get too caught up in the final result because it is a sketchbook, it is a study, it is practice, and that is very important to remind myself because I am always afraid to do things because I am afraid of that they're going to turn out horribly and then I'll just avoid making things all together and that's bad. Okay, going on to the next, the next uh, reference, it is these, this cup of fish. 
So I decided at first to try to just put them all on a solid blue background, but later I do go in and actually block out more detail of the background. I only drew four of the fish because that felt like plenty to get in there and plenty of practice with some different angles and kind of shapes. I really like the way the one facing forward ended up. I'm gonna, I'm definitely going to save him and use him later too. And I also like that one that I'm tracing right now, the little guy kind of like poking up towards the top of the water. I'm tracing out the um, shape of each of those little fish with the studio pen and filling in the flat color for them. I really did not like that blue background, so I took it off and tried doing it with just kind of white background. I played with that for a minute while I added the eyes, but then I realized it was just going to look the best to kind of go in and do the background sort of the same way the reference photo was. So I just did all the colors directly from the reference and kind of used the flat brush to block out the basic shapes, and I kept it very loose, very rough, and... I actually, it was fun and I liked it and I feel like I want to try doing more backgrounds and things like this because usually when I do these studies, I don't do any background at all and I'll just do the subject, the animal, and that's what I've been practicing. But now I feel like I need to start kind of, I want to try to do the full photo more often. Okay, now that the background is done, I'm doing my usual shading routine, starting off with the e with a multiply layer and then we'll do some overlay. And I also am using the soft brush again, just like I did on the goldfish to, on the big goldfish, to erase some of the edges of the fins to give it that translucent effect. I think he's just really into the goldfish because Shane is back and doing his same old stuff. And of course, Jefferson did not want to be left out, so he is here too. But I am going in and grabbing the final fish that I'm going to sketch today. It's this little cute guy. Um, I was pretty... My hand was starting to get tired at this point, so I feel like this one, I kind of rushed it. And I mean, I think it shows, but I, I, like, I know I could have done better if I had done this one first, but it's fine. I'm sketching it out and tracing it with the Studio Pen. And then, just like always, starting off with a multiply clipping mask for the shadows, then doing an overlay for the highlights. The process for this little guy was very, very similar to the first goldfish in terms of the amount of layers and steps. I mean, I took a lot, of, lot less time with it, but it has the same sorts of details here on the fins, and then I'm using the soft brush to erase it. I realized that the dark background was important to get the effects of the fins to really show. So I went in and did that. And then I went back to adding the details of the fish. And the very last step for this was I finished out the background a little more and made it match the reference. Okay, I added my signature and I am done. I actually am really happy with how this turned out. My favorite is, my favorite are the, the two goldfish ones probably. I actually feel so much better and more prepared to draw fish now and I'm excited to do my pond piece. I'm going to go work on that now actually. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.